Okay, guys, we're back here at uh, Frog Town. Turn it. And glue him on. So far, all I've done is I glued this piece down, a couple of flowers in here. I thought I'd show you guys how to do it when I do the rest of it. I love this foam. You can stick your plants in it, paint them, do whatever you want to do to them. I did paint the lizard. He came out pretty cool. A nice little green, a little red on him. Just give him some color. He shows up really good on the rock now. Okay, we just got some plants here, some leaves from some artificial plants. Had to figure out, I need a little more green in here. I need to paint my orange lily pad. I had to make a small one for the other frog. <coughs> I finally cleaned up all my mess here, so let's get some, we got some green here. Get a coat on this. And it's just got tissue paper over it. Piece of plastic. Should have got more paint. Yeah, that ain't gonna be near enough. I didn't get the paint on it, and like I said before, all your little crinkles will come out, which gives it that nice look of a lily pad. Just use your imagination, look at one, look one up, and like I said, Google it, look in a book. And all you do is just try to replicate as close as you can with something you got. Lids doesn't seem like they work really good because you can just trim off to any extra and then you can make it as big or as small as you want them to be. Uh, that's not going to work. We're going to lay it down. There's your side. Looks like it's probably going to need two coats for the orange to not show through, but sometimes that works out because it gives you a little different look to it. So you can see the orange for a little bit. Well, maybe we will leave that just to have the reflection of different colors because in nature it's amazing there's always something different different colors that when you really look close it's like the lotus I made the lotus for the frog to sit in that's just with a white flower and I just took a little pink paint and touched the flower a little bit to give it that lotus look so it would give it just a little better color, closer to a lotus. Just easier to remind you what it is. Okay, we're gonna set that aside for right now. Let it dry while we do the plants. I need to get some flowers. So what I really need to do is get the bottom in to get the water. Because I went out and got some rocks. I just go outside and grab some rocks. I mean find yourself some rocks and like the edge of a pond is usually got a lot of rocks and stones around it because everything's washed out. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting little piles here and there to help break up like my rough edges of my stone or my... It's usually where they collect. Think of a creek or a river or something where you'll see a pile of them build up. And that's usually because that's where they collected from the currents or whatever. So the closer you can copy that kind of stuff it is good to give it that more or less realistic look. Like the turtles coming in so... And we'll throw a couple over here. A little pile there. Because I'm going to try to throw some sand in around this edge. And then do the center in a blue and green. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, glitter. Because that's the only thing I have really for the water. And it does seem to do a good job. Um, I'm thinking about using this red sand. Just to give it some more color. There's a lot of green in this between the frogs and the lilies and the plants and so I'm using other things to add some color like I got the blue on the flowers I just make my own flowers I mean I just take something like this this one's got some purple on it if you can see it I don't know and then we got the purple on these to give it some color I glued the mushroom to the back so that would stay so I keep it where I wanted that's gonna go in this corner so I need to get something behind it you don't really want to just shove it in the corner 
couple of plants behind it will help give it some realistic look. Always have a short and a tall. All plants always have something bigger behind or around it. And that's just from my boxwood outside. Boxwood's dry really good. Turn plants, just test them. I mean, go pluck a branch off something, leave it set for a couple of days, and see how it dries. If it stays, the leaves stay on, and they dry well, and you can use it in this. Because you can also hairspray them or slack them, whatever you want to do, clear coat them, and that, but then they'll be shiny. They won't be so realistic. So I try not to do that. I just try to find something that I can use. Then taking something like this, I made this one out of. Oh, I don't have one out. Let's see. Plus, I want to put some green in here. More green. <coughs> Let's see. Do I have? I don't think I have any more of them left. No, I don't. I like them a lot. They work really good for center pieces but this is just one piece of a plant that was like the leaves from it and it opened up in a star so then I took one of these and just clipped it off and then glued a little piece of a white tip that held on one of these flowers like this and that was supposed to hold these I put some yellow around it for the stema and then the blue buds <coughs> and this I think I'm gonna cut some of this up like grass <coughs> And stick it around the very edge about around the rocks. That's what we'll do. So let's get some of this together. Glue some of these rocks in here. I can show you what I'm gonna need with the what I'm gonna do with the grass. And then we'll add some sand in. And maybe we can get to the blue and get some of these guys glued in. All I'm gonna do is just stick some glue down here. Stick some rocks in it. I just want a little rock pile, just something to break up this plane outside. It's supposed to be the piles of rocks. I mean, you see them all the time in nature everywhere from being pushed around, kicked around, and they pile up. But I just think they're a little characteristic to this where not be so playing around the edges. I like to fill in the edges with something every once in a while. Like the park one I did, I glued this grass all the way around to give it like a hedgerow look of bushes and plants to keep the playground sort of in together to enclose it. And I found out some of the rocks outside, you have to test them because some rocks do not, they have like a real fine powder on them that they build up and they will not glue no matter what. These darn glue strands are hard to, I try to pick them off as they go so I don't have to fight them at the end. Uh, we got some little big ones. I don't want to make oh, there you are. I found these. Just walk around, just find a rock that gets your attention, you know. And if you like it, somebody else might like it. But these are just going to be to help break up that, like I said, that plane that's out here. And remember, around ponds and lakes and all that, there's every kind of rock. So it don't matter. You're going to find all different kinds. I'm trying to remember exactly where I had everything setting so I don't <coughs> mess up what I already got. Where I got things planned to go. And I also found out with your glue sticks, cut them in half so when I get down low, you got that big one that hangs out and it falls out always. But if you get a half one, it stays in better and you can keep running gluing right away. Otherwise, you're standing there waiting, trying for it to get warm. This I haven't figured out. So I don't like the plant that I have for it. But it needs just something like that. I need a big... I think we're going to do some of that. This stuff is just um, landscape grass. You see it in trains and all those things that they use. 
But if you bunch it, you can make like little bushes. Like so. And I usually just take the glue gun and stick it in the middle and bunch them together. Then you have like a bush. And you can shape it as you go. See so I'll show you. Just stick the glue gun inside. Watch it because it's hot. And everything wants to stick together. But then you can form it. It's sort of like a little bush. And it stays that way. You don't want to push it too much. Because then that way you just end up with a big mush. Let it sort of spring itself back out. Not today. You're push it there. Okay. Let's see here. Now we got the bush there. We're just going to throw some glue on the bottom. We're just going to stick it right there. Pull the glue strand away. I try to pick them up, like I said, when I first get them so I don't have so many. And then we're going to spread that out, but we're going to put a rock in there too. That's a nice big orange rock that will give us some color right there. Like a bush growing out of the rock. And that's usually where they, you find them in the cracks and crevices. This is a nice orange, it's got some color to it. Let's just put that up in there. Something for background. But so these guys aren't just butted up in the corner. I could use a little more height, but I think we're going to add a couple of different colored rocks in here. Piece of quartz. Who knows what? A slate. Oh, that's not a good place for my sand. I'm going to throw a couple around the outside of that just to give you some, like a pebbly gravel area, which would be where a mushroom would grow. Try to think about that kind of stuff too. Like where a mushroom is going to grow. See, that's how it just brings it together like that. To give it a place to set to be. them rocks up. I don't know. Let's see if I should glue him down first. There. He's just floating in a little lily, but he had the plants behind him, so I think we're just going to throw a little grass right up in there. He's just a ponder. Um, he's watching our dragonfly here. Alright, I just realized I glued down the wrong side. I'm glad it fell off. Let's see if it'll stick better this time. Okay. He's sort of watching the dragonfly, wondering whether he should eat it or not. Floating on his pad. And then we got this one. He's going to be doing the same thing, but. He's going to be watching that lizard and thinking about what he should do. So maybe we're going to put them guys like that. And this is his lily pad. See, they're all different sizes, so that's the thing. Lilies are, look at them up and you'll see they're all different colors and sizes. They're green ones, yellow ones, dark green, different colors of green. Like I said, you can't really mess them up. Um, that's pretty close. We have this other mushroom. And I'm debating where to put him. Usually they grow by wood. I don't know that. And I think that looks like a good spot right there for him. <coughs> it goes out the purple. And my sister gave me this little ladybug. It's all glass. Pretty cool. I thought that would add some bright color to it. Maybe on the log. Like hiding underneath there. 
watching everybody, seeing what they're doing. Hoping not to get eaten. She is a little big though for this perspective. That's the only thing. I mean the dragonfly is even a tiny bit big, but you can only make them so small. At least I can. Um, so I'm still debating on her. I think that's pretty close. I don't want to keep adding too much more. We're gonna add the grass in there, there, and I think we'll do it. Start doing the sand, and then I'll add in some more. That's, that's gonna be empty there. He's gonna stay there because I had him on this side facing the other way, but I think we're gonna put him there so we can bring him out just a tad bit. Then we'll press a little power rock right here, I think. He does not like to stay. And you just glue him together and get it over with. So let's glue him now. So he stays where he's supposed to stay. Okay. Get it a little lily. And this was just a plastic one that I keep finding these. So I'm just going to glue that one there so it sort of looks like it's floating. I'm debating. I want to, because see these have these little tabs on them to keep them balanced. But there's also the curve in the leaf. So if I take them off, I don't want them to just fall over anyhow. So I think we're just going to let him float above it. <coughs> And we're getting there. Let's get these rocks glued in so we can get uh, box keeps catching on there. Um, we need to get some of the greenery in here. We need to get the sand down. I know you guys can't see that too good. I'm going to move this around a little bit here. Okay guys, all I did was do a little glue like that. Threw some sand in here. I take my brush, I take a dry brush, and go through and just spread it where I want it to go. Give me a little beachfront type deal. Orange sand, I hope, goes good with it. Now we need to get the sand off that brush. That's my glue brush. I'll oh, just rinse in some good water and good to go. <coughs> okay, we need to get the blue and green sparkles in here. We need some more glue. We're going to get some glitter in here. I guess you call it. I call it sparkle. And then we just take the glue and just spread it all around. The whole thing is just to get it all gluey, sticky. I try not to do too big a section at a time. But at the same time you want enough to let the glue didn't get tacky a little bit so it sticks good. Which is clear glue seems to be, this clear, clear Elmer's glue, seems to be pretty sticky. Work pretty good with the sand. So I'm hoping it works as good with the glitter. Alright, let's see what happens. A little blue. The hardest thing is not to get out all over everything else, let me tell you. I got less blue than I do green. So, guess what? We're going to have a little more green than we are blue in here so I'm really glad I had extra colors but what I'm going to do is just leave little patches of darker blue certain spots and then we're going to take the green glitter and go back over that give it that little pondy look 
sun water is usually more green than it is blue or brown but we're gonna go with the little green and blue give it that nice little hondy look pond scum okay back here is gonna be a little more tricky but once it's in the shade it's gonna be a little more green trying to do is just spread it around so it gives it that look. Nice decent amount. I need to get some up underneath Mr. Frog there. I'm gonna clean off our brush. Hopefully all the sand's off. It's not. I need to rinse that. Sand's off. Gotta get dry. Nope. Oh, don't use your shirt, dummy. Alright. I'll pile a little green up there, but I don't know how much glue I got underneath there, so let's throw a little extra glue up in there. Yeah, so it sort of looks like it goes underneath it instead of ending at it. We're going to just put a little pile right in front of it. We're going to shove it up in there and flick it underneath there, I guess. You just brush and just Look a little bit over underneath there. This way, it looks like it's up underneath it. Which would be more green because of the reflection of the lily. Okay, let's work around him. Get some more glue. Go around back here. That grass likes to stick to everything. But what you want it to. We're going to do around him first. Alright, that should be enough. I know you guys can't see the glue because it's clear, but it's there. Believe me. I'm going to go very little blue here. Just want to see that it's there. We're going to go a little more green on this side. Because, of, like I said, the uh, reflection is very little. The sun wouldn't be under here as much. We're going to get a little more green. There we go. We got to do a little power on the edge. Make it rub it up on our knees. And all you're doing is taking the top layer and putting it in there. You're not touching it or pushing it. You're setting the brush right on there. So what happens is the extra pieces that are on top slide off into the glue. Okay, let's get some more glue and keep going. Now around here we're going to go a little more blue. And just bump right into it, into your glitter and you know you won't have a gap there between the two and you won't be able to tell where it starts and ends because it goes together so well and I forgot the glue mom popped on I see that's not good where's my blue glitter there you are okay we're gonna a little more blue here I just pour one over the other and keep it moving. This one we're just going to flake this in to cover up some of our blank spots. I'm going to go around this little guy here. I think I glued him pretty good. I'm going to toss some green in there. Take a dry brush. Hook it up underneath there. keep it moving. I'm thinking about doing some sand around that rock to make that rock stand out more. So I think that's what we're going to do. Is get a little more glue. 
I'll give you guys an idea here what looks like with the sand. That'll contrast with that end. It's just going to help make this stand out a little bit more down here against this plain rock. I don't want too much because we got a lily right there, so it would be like right on the very edge. Maybe he piled it over there so he could get at the lizard. Well, we're gonna run that right up behind my own top here. A little glue down there so we can get you to stay back. And we're gonna throw some right in there. See how the green just sticks that brush like crazy. That's why you keep a rag right here. Water right there. Sand right here. And let's see what we can do. Gonna dump it in there. Now, get your head out of the way, dummy. So we can see what you're doing. Well, I'll get it here for you. We're going to put a nice little pile in front of the rock so we can push it back like we did the other ones. And right, then we're coming down to here. That's our little beach front. There. We forgot behind the rock. Get behind the rock. Okay, we're gonna throw some behind the rock. There we go. Voila. Back in the water. And push. A little sand over there. Now we can finish our water. See, a little bit of water in your glue helps too. Helps keep it thin enough to work with it. Right between them guys, and right up to the sand. We gotta glue mom and pa down before they keep rocking around here. We want them right there. Glue down. We're just about there. Let's see. Glue that. Glue down there. Okay, let's get our little blue. Just that light little flicker. Just tap, tap. All green. We got the green around the edge so we can dump it in. We got green back here so we got to dump some extra here. We got to go behind the lily frog or the lily frog. Ha <laughs> ha. Frogs. Push that back there. One more pile. That we just want to work with. And boom. Okay, we gotta get our green over here. Our sticks. Okay, we gotta do a little brush mark. We need some little bit of glue on his here. And that's a little bit. Sometimes I'm too detailed. I need to just let things be. I don't. And then I mess them up and then I get mad. And I'm like, why didn't I just leave it alone? I get too perfect and you 
you mess it up. You really do. Sometimes it don't have to be perfect, perfect, or to be good. I found out on the first one, and I realized sometimes too much is too much. Just let it be. When it works, it works. Okay. Stop with the glitter. Get glitter happy with glitter. Now I see what your girls go through. Stuff can get addicting. Okay, one more blue in the middle, which I still say we can use a little bit. So we're going to take the glue that's on there with some water. Let that just drip. Blank spots. Throw some more blue glitter in there. There's just a couple little blank spots there that were. Didn't have enough. Alright. I'm trying not to put too much glitter on it because what happens is a breeze comes by and poof, and it's everywhere. And everything's got glitter on it then. Which in the fairy gardens it's okay. This is a fairy garden, but I don't have fairies. What I do is I let people incorporate their own fairies. Fairies are very expensive. If you go out and just Google them, look up fairies once, they're ten dollars to whatever you want to spend for one it all depends on your size and shape and what you detail the more detailed the more expensive they are and you can get them blank I noticed at Michael's they do have them blank you can paint them yourself so I'm going to do some more we have another one coming up here I thought I'd show you guys real quick I guess that's it there she is frog town we're going to let her dry real good I usually let them dry real good before I mess with anything and do any touch-ups. So if I do any touch-ups, I think it would be a little glitter here, something like that. But basically, she's done. And this here was just a log from outside. That there is paper mache with some paint on it. Rock from outside. This is just this here is actually a play-doh. I can't find it anymore, but it's uh, spongy. And when you form it and let it sit overnight, it turns hard instantly so you can form anything out of it but Dollar Tree don't have any more now it's like one of them lucky little things you find and I only had a little bit I wish I had a lot more frog came I bought a big bags of frogs where'd it go oh, da, 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 da. I have no idea what I'm there I got this big bag for a dollar at the market where I'm going to sell these and it has all kinds of frogs in it. And I know frogs are popular. As you see, you got him. I got all different kinds that I'm going to put. I have got a great big... Ooh, that's it. Drop it in there. Great big frog. But there's every kind. I got duplicates of some of them. So I can do another one. I got another one. I'm going to do one with a little house. Or... He's playing... Or is he eating... I don't know, I can't tell if he's carrying something. Um, and I don't know what I did with my gold one. My gold. I got one with a little gold crown on him. He's saved. Um, I got it one with a Santa Claus thing in there. Got one with him sitting there chilling. I can make a scene out of him. And here's the mom one to the other one. Carrying some, she's carrying a baby. Okay. Like that, lines like that. I even got another one coming up here, so this one here's gone. That frog town's done. And this is gonna be the next one. I made it this is my first black one. It's got a little rough texture on the outside. Like I said I just make these. It's just pallet wood. He's a paneling on the bottom and that's it and I think we're going to do a tree on this one another it's going to, this time I think it's going to be lit up around the edge instead of the tree so it's going to light the whole surroundings up but we'll have to wait and see watch my next video and you'll get a heads up on what that one's going to be and I thought I'd show you guys real quick what I've been doing I came up with these are going to the market with me once my truck gets fixed. I'm going to be going. This is the only one I didn't like. But I can show, I'm going to sit and show you guys how I do these. It's just a piece of palette. And I antique them more or less. Come up with this. 
right now these are just my first experimental ones I tried them out to see if everybody would like them now I got a bunch of orders from them already for names, address plates, all kinds of stuff and it's just string with the family love this is going to come off I don't like that either my daughter is like no, I don't like that part I said yeah I don't either so that needs to get eliminated come on come off we're back. They're just stickers. No technical difficulties there. Let's get these. Like I was showing you. The dry brush with the black. And we just lightly do the ends. Bring it to the middle. And I just get it to where I like much as I think that it needs it. And then just start slowly working yourself to the middle. I try to come in from both sides. So that way you get more even strokes and they blend together easier. Because as soon as you dab it, you're going to have a dab mark. And I know from experience I did it over and over. Trying to figure out how to get rid of them is fun. But as you see, it just starts to slowly pick up the grains. The darker color picks up the grains. And enhances them, which is what you want. It just brings them out so you got some depth to it. Like that, it brings all them little lines out. Go across these, you know, enhance them to give it some texture. And that's all it's about, just giving it a little texture. And, and I, don't, I don't really call it antiquing either, but I just take that dry brush and rub it all in until I get it to where I want it to be. The darker colors always underneath the lighter colors. I know I had some white on there, but once you got the black, you got to rinse that for sure to go to the white. Um, that little bit of white ain't nothing. I just do it to get some underneath because you get a better reflection then. This acrylic paint, sometimes it shines a little bit. So that's why I just put a little bit on here and let it sort of like a glaze almost because it's somewhat transparent. I mean, they use this for paintings, so the more acrylic, a good acrylic. This is just a cheap acrylic, and I don't put much white, just enough to give it some lightness to it, so it's not just the black. And it's that chalky, I gotta find the chalky white. I haven't found it yet, and I'm gonna do some blue, that like aqua blue, or whatever they call that new color, I don't know. It's like the aquamarine, the closest I can describe it. And like I said, the other white, I like the other white better that comes in the bottle. Like this stuff here. That acrylic is a lot better paint. This just don't work as good, I noticed. Let me see if I can find it right here. I lose my camera. Yep, there you are. In the box. Deco art. And if you're doing any artwork, I guess you've used it. A little glob there, but you can see the texture is better. It's got like a little chalkiness to it, and it holds its color a little better, and it's not so glossy. So that's where you just bring that in and go give it that nice little white. I know I put there stuff, but it's not going to matter because that's just going to be transparent. It's going to give it a little shine. Now they had this stuff for this that you can use that you put on afterwards that's supposed to seal it. Well, I haven't figured that stuff out yet, so right now this is what I'm doing. I'm debating whether, I mean, they're all going to be indoors, so you really don't have to clear coat it. You could. I mean, just to keep the dust and stuff, but I like the flatter colors with the chalkiness. And that's it. Let her dry and throw a sticker on it. And then usually what I do is I drill, measure in, like three inches from the ends. I try to keep my hole, it depends on how big my boards are. I just center it close as I can. Drill a couple holes in here, which I'll show you guys later. You'll get to see more of them. And drill some holes in here, and then I have some twine that, um, twine that you use for packages. I like that stuff because it gives that burly look, the rustic look. And I just drill a couple holes in there, fill them with glue, stick the strings back down inside after I, I cut them all the same size 
and evenly put them in there and that's how I come up with this one here that's the strand I was talking about I mean you've all seen it and it just makes it a nice that's it and that's what you get same thing and you can make it as dark as you want as light as you want I mean, it's your project so do it the way you like it that's just the way I do it but we're going to have more coming up I'll show you guys more about it my um my next tree garden you'll get to see that also I'm going to do that from the beginning to end so we'll have a little bit more of that one that one's going to be a tree or something whatever I come up with yet I haven't really totally decided you see this is my problem I waste too much paint but I'll always weigh too much more than I need but I'll make another board here and I'll use it up otherwise it'll go to waste but if you like watching these give me a like comment let me know what you think that I could do something different something that would be better if you see something in there that I did and you know a better way let me know I'm all about I'm open to any ideas and comments and I love to hear from you guys let me know what's going on but for now, I guess it's later until the next project. Later.